Good morning, Facebook family and friends. Today is Wednesday, October 18th, the year is 2017. Uh, yesterday, or day before yesterday, uh, Michael Knight, um, who lives in Atlanta, he was a Project Runway finalist. He passed away at 39 years of age. Um, I remember watching him on Project Runway when he was on that show years ago and, keep, and, and watching him all right, so let me just read a little something about him. Georgia fashion designer Michael Knight, who was a finalist on the popular TV competition show Project Runway, died Tuesday at age 39. Knight died outside Atlanta, surrounded by family and friends, said friend Jarris Madison, the editor and photographer of Obvious Magazine, a fashion, lifestyle, and cultural publication. Official calls of death has not been released, but Knight had extensively shared his five-year struggles with irritable bowel syndrome, writing in a now-deleted Facebook post that he suffered chronic abdominal pain and leaky gut, extreme fatigue, and exhaustion. He was innovative and unapologetic, kind and giving, balance instead of Knight. He made sure that anybody with his core, anyone, anybody who was in his core circle, his family and friends, didn't want for anything. He was an amazing man. Knight appeared on season three of Project Runway, which aired on Bravo, finishing fourth that year. He returned for Project Runway All Stars, finishing eighth on the show that now airs on Lifetime Network. That's right, that's what Bravo did. They did move it to Lifetime. We are all sitting here about the passing of a member of the Project Runway family, said Lifetime spokeswoman D. Perez in a statement. It's a loss of a great talent, and we wish his family peace and solace during this difficult time. Knight spent his childhood in Montgomery, Alabama, but graduated from Washingtonville Senior High School in Washingtonville, New York in 1996. Later that same year, he began his freshman year of college at Georgia State, so Georgia Southern University in Statesboro, Georgia. In 2001, he earned a Bachelor of Science degree in apparel design and manufacturing. After completing his undergraduate studies, Michael broke into the fashion industry in Atlanta by working as an intern at Wilborn Exclusive in 2001 before becoming a fashion stylist in the music industry in 2002. In 2006, Knight became a contestant for Project Runway and went on to win the season's fan favorite award. The next year, he introduced his label, Michael Knight, on BET's Rip the Runway and designed a line of custom tees for Starbucks Corporation. In 2008, Knight launched Kit and Duck, his lingerie label for men and women, and his unisex fragrance, Magic. Madison said Project Runway definitely helped expand Knight's brand, which caught the eyes of celebrities like Tony Braxton, Sherry Sh Sh Shepard, even Marcel, who also became his clients. His name was and still on people's mind. The industry is very competitive, but he did continue to do his, his way. Madison said Knight, who had been living in Los Angeles, was always sharp and chicken his personal style that carried over in his collection. He died doing what he loved. Um, he is survived by his parents, Michael Sr. and Pamela Knight. Knight is survived by two sisters. So, okay, I got a lot of emails and questions asking questions about Michael Knight's death and irritable syndrome. And so I went and looked at the post that he posted on July 12th. Uh, I'm going to read you all something. Something caught my eye in this post that kind of concerned me. Y'all, let me just, let me say something. Y'all, I've been doing the Black Gay Man since... I was 17, 16, 17 years of age. I am 47 now. I've been dealing with this for a long time. Something caught my eye in this post. And I'm going to tell you about issues that I've had with friends who... Well, let's, let me read what he wrote on July 12th. He wrote, I've decided to share something personal because in the past few months, I've disappeared from the socials and my actual life. After several of my close friends sending random text calls, texts and calls concerned with my well-being, I just decided that this would be the best way to share with the best of my friends and family. 
For the past five years, I've been suffering from IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. This year has really taken a toll on my health, badly in short. IBS is a gastrointestinal disorder in which the food I eat, my body doesn't absorb malabsorption, the nutrients from what I eat. In addition, because I have a leaky gut openings in my intestines, op uh, openings in my intestines, toxins that the food leak into my bloodstream, which can cause autoimmune diseases, diabetes, lupus, cell disease, and rheumatoid arthritis. Because of which, I suffer from chronic abdominal pain, diarrhea, and nausea, extreme fatigue, and exhaustion, food sensitivities, allergies, foggy brain headaches. As of recent, I've developed some acute autoimmune responses like psoriasis, inflamed joints, and small respiratory issues. And this is what caught my eye. After months and years of cutting out processed food and some meat, exiting out gluten and other toxins all help some. Being red ridden for weeks and seeing doctors specials, I realized that traditional medicine only remedies the symptoms and not rectify the illness. So with the help of a nutritionist and herbalist, it is a must I go with a complete plant, herb, diet, and lifestyle. Okay. That's what he wrote. July 12th. Whew. Okay, let me just say something. I have a lot of friends who are um, suffer from HIV, who live with HIV. And they go through a lot of health issues, ups and downs, ups and downs. Then they meet some doctor who says there's an urban specialist, urban plant specialist, who pulls them off all the HIV medications and say, I have a better way for you to deal with this issue. And it never works out for these guys. Every person I know who ever went down that path Stopping taking their HIV medications to pursue an alternative medicine uh, is it has been a disaster. Now I don't know if this man was HIV positive. Now this is speculation, but let's just look at the fact. He's thirty nine years of age. He's a black gay man. More than likely, more than likely, he was living with HIV. And he had irritable bowel syndrome. HIV, irritable bowel syndrome combined together probably created a very toxic environment within this body. Because I know people who have HIV positive who have irritable bowel syndrome or who had it because they're not here anymore. So I've been around a long time. I'm an old red dinosaur around here. I've seen this stuff. I don't know how my friends meet these quacks, I call them, that um, say we're going to use herbs and special ingredients and special stuff. And they take them off their life-saving medications and give them all the stuff because the medicines are bad for you. I've seen this so often I've lost count. In fact, I just had a conversation a few months ago with a friend who said he was doing... So he had stopped taking all his HIV medications and he was doing some, some mess that some doctor had put him on. I was in shock. I said, why are you doing that? Then he was spending thousands of dollars of his own money for this treatment that's supposed to cure him of HIV. I said, it's going to cure you of HIV? Are you serious? Do you really believe this? He hung up the phone with me. He said I was being negative and hung up the phone with me. You have a doctor who's been told you that he can cure you of HIV. He can pull you off your HIV medications. You're taking a bunch of herbs and supplements. He can cure you, and this is not all over the news. I said, where did you meet this doctor? He said, it's a specialist here in Atlanta. I know a lot of people use them. I'm thinking, oh boy. What is going on with these guys? Sometimes people get so sick, they get desperate. They get desperate for relief, and they make mistakes that cost them their lives, and they trust the wrong people. 
you know, I'm not saying that natural herbs, natural herbs possibly, possibly could help someone, but every time my dealings with them, when I hear when I hear people saying that they're going a natural right route to um, to resolve an issue. It is disastrous. It doesn't end well. Especially when they end up taking... Um, I had a friend who was suffering from cancer who wasn't HIV positive. He had cancer. He didn't want to do chemo. He was doing all this different stuff. Had he did chemo, he lived. But he chose to go some natural route. I was like, and we didn't understand him. I believe... Sometimes when you're sick, mentally things get not right up in your brain. And you make decisions that may not be the best for you. And then you get manipulated by somebody. My friend who had cancer, um, I think he was manipulated by some specialist that told him he didn't need chemotherapy, which would have saved his life. He didn't want to do chemo because he said it was toxic and poison. And the cancer killed him. When he didn't have to die. So I don't know. I'm just trying to. I, I I'm looking at this thing with Michael Knight, and I and I've never said just this is just speculation for me. But even if he didn't have HIV and he's went down that that natural herb, and so I just have a problem with that. That's what killed Coretta Scott King. Uh, but, um, her daughter took her. Uh, she was suffering from cancer, and she started doing this natural to some doctor out west. And they were doing some natural mess, and Coretta's got thing ended up dying. Um, that's said she died from cancer, which might have been inevitable. But for a 39 year old man to die from irritable bowel syndrome, something's wrong here. It's very rare for someone for that issue to take away your life. Now, that's what goes back to why I say I think this was HIV-related, which we'll never know the truth. HIV combined with irritable bowel syndrome or any other, any, HIV mixed with any type of, whether it's diabetes, cancer, anything, HIV can be a problem. And it can create a lot of health issues, even if you're on medications. But if you remove those medications, we got a problem. We go all natural route. Like I said, guys, I've seen this too often. I've seen too many of my friends stop taking life-saving medications and do this natural bullshit and end up dead. They die from it when they could have lived. Why they made these decisions? They were having health issues at the time. And then they made the decision, okay, I'm going to go try something different. And it cost them their lives. If you're HIV positive, you must take your medications. You must stay in treatment. You have to. Those medicines will save your life. I know some people will get angry about this video. I can see it now. Because this is me speculating. <laughs> but my intuition is usually 9 times 10 out of 10 correct when it comes to this in our community. I'm a black gay man. I know what's going on in our community. Anyway, that's just my thoughts on this subject. I'm about to, you know, end this video now. Today is Wednesday, October 18th. Um, let me just say, Michael Knight was an inspiration for me because I remember watching his show, watching him on TV, and I remember cheering for him. I remember meeting him at my own home. And, um... He came over to a pool party at my house, and we sat there out there talking. I was in. I, I love to see black men having success in life. And this man was having great success, and then some unfortunate illness entered into the picture. It probably stopped a lot of his him from being able to do a lot of stuff that he would wanted to do in his life, and it eventually took his life away. So we must be careful with our health. Because all you have. Um, I know a lot of people in the gay community dislike me because they view me as the enemy. But here I am fighting for you all to live. To live a good, healthy life. 
a prosperous life, but you don't see it that way. I'm just taking my life's experiences, things that I've seen in my life, and just explaining what I've seen to try to help younger people live a more healthier lifestyle. And live and thrive and have success. If a doctor tells you, or some quack tells you, to stop taking your HIV medications or whatever type of treatment, you need to get second and third and fourth and fifth and sixth opinions about this. Because it will, it will ultimately lead in your death if you stop taking certain life-saving medications to pursue something different. If it's not approved, I just don't, I just don't buy into this whole herbal alternative medicine some people do, I don't, because I've never seen it work for anybody. Now when I know their medicines are right, for example, I, I made the mistake a few years ago, I stopped taking my um, high blood pressure medicine and I was taking this vinegar and garlic, what was that vinegar mess I was drinking? Apple cider vinegar. Needless to say, it did not lower my blood pressure, but it did cause me severe stomach problems from the acid. And I stunk. I was taking garlic. And I was doing garlic, um, apple cider vinegar, and some other stuff. It was just, I was ridiculous. And I went to Dr. Mike and I said, What is going on here? Your blood pressure is in the sky every time you come in here. And there's a, she had to find it put me back on my med. I started taking, went back to taking my high blood pressure medis medicines, and my blood pressure went back to normal. Why I chose to go down that path? Um, I really don't remember what led me to try something alternative. I think it's something I saw on Facebook because of the internet or something. I said, let me get this a try. Worst decision ever. Now I take my medication faithfully every morning. My blood pressure is normal. Take it faithfully. Anyway, if you like my videos, click like, share them with family members or friends. I look forward to reading you all's comments and thoughts about Michael Knight's death. And um, just get your opinion about stuff. What do you think about him stopping his treatments and going down at the herbal. I mean, I just think it was crazy. But he probably was desperate and felt he needed to do something different. I've seen this. I've seen it too often. I've lost count of how many friends I've um, known for years who have a serious health issue and they try something different because they get desperate. My sister Jackie, she was desperate. And um, it never ends well. So anyway, like I said, today it is Wednesday, October 18th. Uh, you guys go out and do something productive with your lives. I look forward to reading your thoughts and opinions. And um, rest in peace, Michael. I'm out of here.